they centric. So for this, I would like to invite Dr. Devrat Arya, Director of Medical Oncology, Max Hospital, Sake. Uh, okay, so I think the meeting is start, sir. Yeah, so uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you for this opportunity to talk uh, in this meeting. And uh, the mandate that I have today is to talk briefly about the role of immunotherapy in advanced breast cancer and the focus today is going to be tecentric. So, so we know breast cancer is one of the most commonly uh, diagnosed cancers worldwide. And it's one of the most uh, commonly diagnosed cancers here in India as well. In fact, the numbers in the urban centers are very high. We know it's a heterogeneous disease. Uh, historically, the outcomes have gen generally improved, but we also understand that the subtype triple negative breast cancer is, is a challenging subtype to treat. Uh, so traditionally, we've divided breast cancer on the basis of ER, PR, and her new expression. TNBC, by definition, is a tumor that lacks expression of all these three receptors. Approximately 80% of these fall into the basal-like, uh, based on the gene expression analysis uh, subtyping. And these are uh, uh, the more aggressive subtypes. And when you talk about TNBC, there are also uh, six unique subtypes which have been identified so far. So what are the characteristics of TNBC? I think we all know that they are more likely to have great histology. They are usually larger tumors. They are associated with higher mortality rates. They are generally more aggressive and they have higher rates of distance recurrence. And uh, uh, clearly uh, TNBC, especially in advanced stage, has, has a significant unmet medical need in terms of the treatment possible. Uh, incidence fairly high, nearly 10 to 20% of all cancers worldwide are triple negative. I think when we talk about Indian subcontinent, there's data to suggest that the, the, the component TNBC is actually a little higher in terms of incidence at 27 to 35%. Unfortunately, the way disease presentations are here in India, nearly half of these patients actually present with a more advanced disease. Even in Indian pop uh, population, the median age is younger. A significant number of patients uh, are less than 50. And in fact, uh, cases have been reported at as as early at age as 22 and, and the median age of presentation is 49 years. So clinical output, as I said, long-term outcomes with triple negative breast cancer are much more dismal as compared to other subtypes. And, and when you talk about, uh, you know, how this disease is aggressive, how treatment options are limited, I think, as I said earlier, this is a significant unmet clinical need in the field of oncology and particularly breast oncology. Now, uh, these uh, have been the treatment paradigms for uh, uh, triple negative breast cancer. So we know for metastatic uh, triple negative breast cancer, taxanes usually have been the first line therapy. Uh, if if uh, um, a combination needs to be used, taxanes are usually combined with uh, carboplatin. For most uh, second line uh, triple negative breast cancer, the options include either capecitin and ribulin. But clearly when you look at, uh, uh, you know, the options, as I said, anthracyclines and taxins are options, but uh, these options would also be governed by a the the need for combinations which can work faster and and are associated with overall higher response rates may also be associated with higher toxicity. So the need for a faster response, but also the performance status of the patient, the possible adverse events, and the patient preferences as well. So this is a, a graph which actually. Uh, shows what the dismal outcomes with various standard chemotherapy regimens in metastatic triple negative breast cancer has been. And as you would note that uh, uh, survival is dismal irrespective of whatever chemotherapy has been used and irrespective of whether a single agent be, is being used or, or a combination is being used. So uh, with that backdrop, I think uh, early uh, you know, research also has suggested that triple negative breast cancer may be associated with much more higher mutation rate. In fact, uh, mutation rates may be uh, as, as high as 13 times to what we see in a normal cell. And also that uh, there is a uh, uncharacteristically higher it, uh, TIL infiltration in triple negative. So you have much more higher tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. We also know that uh, when you have subtypes of breast uh, cancer, where TILs are high for every 10% increase in TIL, you'd actually have some correlation with the risk of death and risk of dis uh, distant recurrence and risk of, uh, you know, overall outcomes. Uh, we also know that PDL one, which has traditionally been used as a biomarker for response to immunotherapy, 
has been highly expressed so the numbers would vary on the the companion diagnostic that you use but um, you know initial research did suggest that for uh, for triple negative breast cancer nearly 50% women had a pdl1 positivity so high amount of til higher mutation rate and a significant high pdl1 expression actually predicted for a possible responsiveness to immunotherapy and and that's how early studies started and in fact uh, uh, with with pdl1 or anti pdl1 therapy and anti pd1 therapy as well and that is how uh, you know uh, those studies came into being and one of the first phase 3 trials that was reported was the im passion 130 trial i think we are all aware of this trial but uh, you know briefly uh, this was a, a phase 3 study in advanced treatment naive metastatic breast cancers so these patients could have used taxin or anthra in the new adjuvant or adjuvant setting but they could not have received it in the in the metastatic setting and these patients uh, uh, were then randomized to receive uh, uh, atezolizumab that is tecentric in combination with napaclitaxel uh, uh, and they were compared to those who received placebo with napaclitaxel and, and the co-primary uh, endpoints of this study was PFS and OS. Importantly, importantly they, uh, they, while, uh, they uh, included all comers in terms of uh, PDL1 expression, PDL1 expression based on immune cell of positivity of 1% or more or less was uh, one of the stratification factors and so was presence of absence of liver meds or prior taxi moves. Uh, NAP paclitaxel was used a because uh, you know there's no need for steroid pre-medication it does appear to show similar OS uh, um, in, co in comparison to paclitaxel and the 100 milligram per meter square uh, dose is the uh, the weekly regimen is actually one of the most commonly used regimen with this drug so this is the patient disposition from the study uh, and this is the baseline characteristics. So uh, very balanced baseline characteristics, uh, relatively young median age at around 55 in both arms. Uh, uh, nearly 63% patient had actually received a prior anthracycline or taxane. Most of the patient had a significant disease burden and nearly 40, 41% in both arms had a PDL1 expression that is IC of more than 1%. So what were the outcomes? So this is the primary PFS analysis. Remember, this is the intent to treat outcome. So uh, median PFS uh, was improved from 5.5 months to 7.2 months uh, with the addition of atezolizumab to nap paclitaxel. So this is a 1.7 month statistically significant improvement. Uh, when you uh, when one did the analysis based on PDL1 expression uh, in the PDL1 positive population, the uh, the median PFS was actually five months for nap paclitaxel and and it rose to 7.5 months for uh, atezolizumab with nap paclitaxel again a significant improvement in uh, progression free survival uh, the first interim analysis also showed a numerical higher overall survival 21.3 months for the combination versus 17.3 months for uh, for nap paclitaxel alone this is a 3.7 month improvement and again when you looked at the data from pdl1 expression the uh, the median os for the comparator arm uh, atezolizumab with nap paclitaxel was as high as 25 months uh, which uh, was uh, much higher than the 15.5 months that was seen with nap paclitaxel what was pfs subgroup analysis uh, you know uh, uniform homogeneous outcomes homogeneous improvement in progression free survival uh, uh, irrespective of presence of absence of liver metastasis prior taxin used uh, and and if you look at the entire subgroup in fact there's a homogeneous improvement in in outcomes with the addition of atezolizumab to nap paclitaxel uh, overall responses numerically higher responses numerically higher uh, uh, complete response rates as well and when you look at uh, duration of response again atezolizumab actually improved the median duration of response in both the arms uh, uh, both pdl1 and positive and pdl1 negative compared to napaclitaxel alone adverse events uh, uh, there were slightly higher adverse events with in the uh, the atezolizumab napaclitaxel arm most of these adverse events uh, were minor. There were only a few grade three adverse events. Hepatitis was high, but most of these were laboratory anomalies. Hypothyroidism was significant in atezolizumab arm, but most of it is grade one and two. In fact, pneumonitis, which was a concern prior to the study, was actually infrequent in both the arms. Uh, the most common adverse events were uh, alopecia, fatigue, nausea, diarrhea, generally uniform in both the arms. And the most common serious adverse events actually included pneumonia, UTI, dyspnea, and paraxia. But when you look at the percentage, uh, you know, increase with the addition of atezolizumab, it's usually less than 2% in both the arms. So while overall serious adverse events were higher, 
um, you know the, the the actual difference was very small so we have had some updated efficacy analysis as well and in, in the the overall improvement in outcomes especially overall survival has been maintained with the updated analysis uh, particularly in the pdl1 positive population there is a significant improvement in overall survival with the addition of atezolizumab to napaclitaxel compared to napaclitaxel alone and in fact even in the updated safety analysis there are new no new safety signals so i think uh, from this study there were key learning points it did demonstrate a benefit of addition of immunotherapy to chemotherapy that is atezolizumab to chemotherapy in metastatic triple negative breast cancer uh, uh, it it actually provoked a change in in the paradigm of treatment in the first line setting for these patients uh, the the overall hazard ratio of pfs in the intent to treat population was uh, 0.8 but when you look at the pdl1 positive population the hazard ratio was very impressive at 0.62 there was a clinically meaningful median overall survival which exceeded uh, two years there are no new safety signals and in fact the study also helped in identifying a biomarker that is pdl1 for choosing or selecting patients who could have been uh, who who can be benefited with the addition of immunotherapy <clears throat> now uh, 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 we have had some other studies as well uh, including the keynote study where the addition of another immunotherapy to chemotherapy has shown benefit and i think i think overall this is uh, a, a, a proof of principle that in pdl1 expressing uh, expressors uh, you would have benefit with the addition of immunotherapy to the chemotherapy backbone i think uh, one of the key question uh, of late that has come up is is the uh, is the us fda indication for tesentric so uh, tesentric or atezolizumab has a regular full approval from dcgi based on the im passion 130 study and there's been no change in the regulatory guideline uh, when it comes to india there has been uh, a us uh, fda withdrawal and that's because of uh, some of the initial studies from the i impression uh, 131 study where in fact uh, when tesentric was added to paclitaxel in the pdl1 positive subset uh, improved outcomes were not seen now we don't know what led to uh, that difference in outcomes whether it was the chemotherapy arm which was paclitaxel and not that paclitaxel uh, but again the us fda did say that the withdrawal was not because of a new safety signal or new efficacy signal in fact they have continued to maintain that safety efficacy is maintained and therefore uh, for all practical purposes in our country uh, the the dcgi still says that uh, it's it's uh, advisable to add, you know add tesentric to chemotherapy in the suitable population thank you very much thank you and back to the organizers Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Devrat.